Hello, in this video I'm going to explain how to create fun animal hybrids like my zebra cockerel combo here. And along the way we'll learn a few key Photoshop compositing skills. So these are my two starting images here. I've got the cockerel and the zebra and using a combination of selection and layer masking techniques we're going to blend them together to come up with our animal hybrid. So let's get cracking. So we'll start off by going to the cockerel image here and I'll grab the lasso tool from the Photoshop tool panel over here and I'm just going to make a very rough selection of the area that I want to copy over. So just going to drag around the head like this to copy the area. Then I'll use a keyboard shortcut to copy it. That's Command or Control and C. Command C on a Mac, Control C on a PC. I'll go to the zebra image and hit Command or Control and V to paste it in. Then I can hit Command or Control and T to transform, or I can go to Edit Free Transform. And then using the bounding box, I can click and drag outwards while holding Shift to make my layer slightly larger, and I'll position it roughly in place. I can drag outside of the box here to rotate it. I could also perhaps lower the layer opacity. So I can bring up my Layers panel here by going to Window Layers, and I can just drop the opacity of that layer slightly just so I can kind of line it up with the image underneath. So I'm going to try and drag it to about there. Let's perhaps up the opacity a little bit so we can see a bit more clearly what's going on. We can always fine tune the positioning later, so we just want to get it kind of roughly in place for the moment, and I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll hit Enter to apply, and then I'll drag the uh, opacity here back up to 100%. Now I'm going to isolate the areas on the chicken head here that I want to use. So I'm going to use all the red areas here. So I'm going to grab the quick selection tool for this from the tools bar over here. And I'm just going to resize my brush tip here by using the bracket keys on my keyboard. The square bracket keys allow me to make the brush tip larger or smaller. So I'll bring it to about that size and then I can just paint over the head here to select the areas that I want. And notice how the tool snaps onto the edges of the shapes that we're after. If it goes over any areas that we don't want, then we can always hold Alt and Paint to subtract these areas. So I can hold Alt and click on this little area here to subtract it from my selection. I can fine tune things until I've locked onto the area that I want. Now initially selections like this are going to be really hard edged and jagged but we can take them into the select and mask command here to improve them. So I'll click on select and mask at the top of the screen here and you can choose a view here. I've got the on black view which gives me a clear indication of how my selection is looking. Now if I up the radius here notice how the selection edge kind of expands and contracts to pick up the details that I want to include and exclude everything else. I can also paint with the refine brush tool and I can just paint around the edges like this to try and get a better edge around these areas here. So this is really useful when making selections, particularly of things like animals where you've got fur or hair or feathers that you want to try and include or exclude in your selection. So well worth taking your selection into the select and mask command to improve it. And once done, we can go down to the options at the bottom here and choose an output. So we want to output our selection to a layer mask. And that means that anywhere outside the selection is going to be hidden behind a layer mask once we hit OK. So let's do that now. And now you can see we've added a layer mask to that layer and we're able to hide everything but the selected area to give us the areas that we want while hiding hiding everything else. So I can grab the move tool at this point and I can again just tweak the positioning to get it looking how I want like this. And let's perhaps click on the bounding box. We'll make it a little bit smaller by again holding shift and dragging the corner point. Let's bring it across over to here as well and perhaps rotate a little and again just fine tune the positioning until we're happy. And then I'll hit enter to apply. Now we've got a little problem here. We can see the original head of the zebra behind the chicken. So what I'm going to do now is highlight the background layer here and click the create new layer icon here in the layers panel to give me a new empty layer. And I'm going to rename this layer. We'll call it cloning. Then I'm going to grab the clone tool from the toolbar over here. 
in the tool options at the top of the screen here, I want to make sure this sample option is set to current and below. That means I can clone on this empty layer while sampling from the layers below. So I'm bit effectively cloning from the background layer, but keeping it non-destructive by using this empty layer to clone on. So now I can hold Alt and sample a clone source. Before I do so, I'm just going to right click and check that my hardness is set to zero. So I'll hold Alt and sample from a clean area of the background like this area here. And then I can just paint to clone over the zebra head. And again, I can just hold Alt and keep clicking to keep sampling the background details to get rid of the zebra head where it kind of overlaps the chicken. So I'm just going to finish off cloning over here. And I'm happy with that. So now everything's fitting together quite nicely. If we zoom out a little bit, we can see how that's working. Now we could perhaps zoom in close and just check the edges around here just to fine tune the layer mask. I'll highlight the mask thumbnail here in the layers panel. And while this is highlighted, we can paint with either white to reveal parts of the chicken or black to hide them. So making sure that's highlighted, I'll hit B for my brush tool. And again, I can use the square bracket keys to resize my brush tip. And I'll just hit D to set my foreground color to white, X to flip it to black here. So I'm using black and painting to hide parts of the layer. And I'll just fine tune any messy patches like this until I've got everything I want. In, in little details like this where we might have lost some of the detail that we want, we can hit X and flip our foreground color to white and then paint to reveal those details along the edge like this. So this is the power that we have with layer masks to either hide or reveal areas to fine tune the blend of two different images like this. And this is central to all kinds of compositing projects. Now, there's one other thing I'd like to do here. I want to create kind of a little shadow here where the chicken head meets the zebra body. So what I'm going to do is highlight the layer below the chicken head and then click the new layer icon again to give me another new empty layer. I'll rename this layer shadow. Then I'm going to grab the brush tool, set my foreground color to black. Again, I can hit D to do that. And I'm just going to paint along this edge here using a soft edged brush tip to create sort of a shadow along this area here. And I'll just continue it around this area here like this. Now at the moment it's much too strong, but what I can do now is lower the opacity of that layer until it looks more natural like that. And if I toggle the visibility of that layer off and on, you can see how that just helps to ground the new head with the body just by making this area slightly darker around here like this. And I'm happy with that. So there we go. That's my finished composite. That's how to blend two animals into one for a creative creature combo.